So we're starting, we're actually continuing. This is the second class. There was one class. I encourage you to, everything that we have is, um, goes on my YouTube channel. So feel free to uh, check the first class. I think it's an important class to give you some perspective. But just to make a quick review, we say that, um, again, Ghanedan story, right? The story of paradise is the stories of all the stories. Whatever happened there is the root and the map and the DNA um, of everything that has happened later on in history. And especially what happening now it's really when in the middle of it um you know there's that concept of soft massive whatever happens at the end it was the original thought so we are in a way you know his, his story is like a i like to look at it as a, 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 a you turn like, like a tube so you go down in his story and now you go back to the beginning so as you go back to the beginning you're going to experience everything that that was there so you have to confront all the problems of the beginning. And um, um, actually there's a book from uh, on the Rampa that's called Aharit Kereshit, right? What's after it is like the beginning. And therefore it's fundamental to understand the story of Gan Eden. Unfortunately, it's not studied enough. You know, it happens during the Sukkot time and everybody's happy and right away it is Bereshit and right away and then we go Noah. Bereshit is the story of all the stories. The Vinagon says that everything that is in the Torah is included in the Pasha of Bereshit. So, um, you know, we, we could stay a whole year on Bereshit. Actually, that's what I did on my own <laughs> for the past two years that I have been only studying Bereshit uh, beside the other regular Parshas, but uh, try to understand it in depth. And it's each time I read it, it's like another story, another layer. Right, it's a, we have to look at the Torah as an onion. How come after 3,333 or 34 years, we're still learning the same Torah with the same words? It's like, you know, it's like we're addicted. I mean, that's the only good addiction that uh, is good to have, you're addicted to the Torah, is because it's, it, there's another peel of the onion that we're taking out and uh, you can, and you can cry out of joy. <laughs> Onions, you don't cry out of joy, you cry out of uh, pain, but in the Torah, you can cry out of joy for the, all those layers, you know, it's like, and this and this. So here we have a, st a story of um, Bereshit, and we explained last time that Adam Arishon in Gan Eden is like, um, again, Adam was not a man like we see ourselves today. He was on a higher level before the sin. We're speaking about a light being. His skin was made out of, no, he didn't have skin. His body was a body of light. So meaning he had the body that was very spiritual still. Um, and then he had the soul that was shining. Um, and I always like to give the example, uh, you know, to make things tangible. So for example, you know, if I put my finger like that, right? So you're gonna see, you don't see my, my, my body anymore, right? You see, you, you see the, the, through the nail, you see light, right? And then when, when, when he sinned, it became like that, right? So, which means that before the light was so strong that you only saw the light. There was the body was a thin layer. After we sin, we start seeing a body of physicality and we don't see the soul anymore. It was the opposite. Before you could see the soul, and not the body. Now you see the body and you don't see the soul. Um, and by the way, that's why we have the nails, right? It says Havdala, we put our nails to the light exactly for that, to remember that when we were in Gan Eden on the level of Shabbat in Gan Eden of perfection, our body looked like nail. It was transparent, it was shining, it was, it was beautiful. And, and, and then we look at it on Havdala and say, wow, this is who I can become, this is who I was, let's go back to the beginning of creation. And we go back into the week with that perspective of, I took the energy of Shabbat, let me try to fix the world to go back to that level. So that's one of the reasons that we have that whole Avdala ceremony with the candles and the light, bring light to uh, darkness. 
Um, okay, so Adam Arishan was in Gan Eden. He was in the world. Was Gan Eden? It's 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 Gan Eden really is this world, but on a much higher level. Just like we spoke about the onions, right? Paradise is in this world. God is here. We can technically live in Gan Eden and hear God's voice, but we have to become more spiritual, just regain the spirituality that Adam Arishan had in Gan Eden. Technically, I should be able to see a person and see its soul. The very holy people like the Arizal, the Baal Shem Tov, the Ben I mean, there's a lot, a lot of tzaddikim who will look at you, Rav Kaduri, look at you and see literally your soul and see what your mission what is or where you come from, how many times you got reincarnated, what it, what's your mission, what you're here to fix. So, so we, we should be able to see like that, right? The same way I have eyes that can see on the physical, I have eyes behind those eyes, so to speak. I have spiritual eyes, I have physical and spiritual eyes. So my spiritual eyes should be able to see the spirituality. But because of our, uh, because of our sin, there was a filter that came. And now I think I can only see physical. I think I can only smell physical. I think I can only hear physical. No, it's not true. You can actually have the, 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 those five senses as sense of the soul, right? And like I like to always get, say, no, when I move my hand like that, what is moving? Really what's moving is my soul. My soul has five fingers. It's covered with a glove called skin. So really when I do that, it's, it's my soul moving, but it's recovered with skin. So we, we are very holy spiritual beings. And our soul that is in us is pure. Every morning we say, right? God, the, the soul you put in me is pure every morning. Because we have to understand, we have a filter. We have, we're in a very, very physical state. But my essence, who I am, is a soul, right? My, my body is not, um, my body is not me. My body is my garment. And just take, like I can take off my garment, I can take off my body technically. We never die. My soul is eternal. Everybody is trying to look for the cure for immortality or the, 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 the magic thing for immortality. We are immortal. We never die. It's my body. I switch body, right? Um, so we just transfer from body to body. One of the best way to understand it is like the, the soul is like energy, right? So if the soul is like energy, we know energy doesn't get created or, or destroyed. Energy only gets transferred. It, it, it's, it, it evolves, it, it transfers. So my, uh, my energy is always here. And um, yes, so that was a little bit long of an introduction, but uh, it's fascinating ideas, uh, you know, not ideas, concept to understand really what the true essence of man is. And man, as, as we understand now, is in Gan Eden, and God uh, puts him there. And we're trying to explain, okay, why do we have all those trees? So let's reread again what it says here. Uh, we are up to chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, Hashem, God, took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to guard it. Okay, so... The, these, that double work, um, there are many different interpretations of what to guard to, and to, to work and to guard uh, means. Um, one the most famous interpretation is to work it, which is to do the mitzvot, the 248 positive commandments, and to guard it is a protection um, for what not to do in order to protect what is precious. Those are the 365 negative commandments. That's the basic understanding. And by doing the mitzvot, we are able to recreate a Gan Eden. Um, now, that's on a simple level. On a deeper level, we understand that God obviously, why we created in the first place? God wants us to achieve the highest possible pleasure. And that's, by the way, some, something that people forget, you know, what, like, this is the essence of everything. God is perfect, and God is crazy in love with us, and God created everything for us to have the most powerful, incredible, unbelievable experience possible 
that a creature can have. And he designed this world for us to achieve that. Now to achieve that, we know no pain, no gain. We know that the best way to achieve the highest possible experience that, that a human being can achieve, we need to go through uh, effort, through earning our own uh, closeness to God, right? Because closeness to God, God himself is the ultimate pleasure. So what did God do? He puts us here to do the work and to guard it. Whatever work it's going to be, it's a work, the work of getting closer to God, the work of protecting our relationship with God. So we know that, you know, if uh, let's say you have uh, two individuals, a man and a woman, and they're trying to, um, they're working on loving each other. So how do they work on loving each other, on getting closer to each other? Well, you work, the avda, what's avoda? We know avoda is in, 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 in the Torah, the rabbis explains that avoda is the, the, the service in the temple. What's the service in the temple? It's the korbanot, right? Um, and today the korbanot are replaced with prayer. And that's why we know we call prayer avoda shebelev, the work of the heart. Which means that how do I get closer to the other? By working on my communication skills, so to speak, right? It's by working on speaking. How do I speak to God? Who I, how do I communicate to God, with God? How do I get closer to God? How, and, and, and it's true of every human being. If we spoke properly to every human being, there'd be total peace and love all over the world. That's why we come to the end of time and our power of speech is, is so, where we say, Sinat Chinam, Lashonara, right? The whole big thing, Chobetz Chaim and all that with Lashonara, why it's such a big thing? Because everything is the mouth. The moment you say a good thing, you get closer to the other. The moment you say a bad thing, you destroy the relationship. So uh, in, in a way, it's as if to say, God put us in a garden, in, in, in a world where our main work is to learn about communication between two individuals, between us and God. So that's um, you know, one way to understand it a bit deeper. Now, um, so let's see, so let's, let's, let's continue a bit, let's see what it says. Oh, uh, last time, which is important to understand concept, we spoke about what the trees are in the Garden of Eden. The trees represents, it's a museum of God. It was not trees, physical trees. It was not fruits, physical fruit. When we speak about that, we, it, it means we know we have the tree of knowledge. So obviously knowledge is not food. So why do we speak about food? Because food is something you take and you make part of you. Why you eat and becomes part of your body. You are what you eat. So we, so God created knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the universe, knowledge of God. Every tree, so to speak, and... Um, I'm kind of getting ahead, but every tree basically is uh, like a wisdom of understanding the other, understanding God. So here, that's what the, the Chumash says, and Hashem, God commanded the man saying of every tree, and by the way, that's very important to remember, what, when you, it's important to ask everyone, what is the first, 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 first thing that Hashem asked of man directly, right? For man to man, what did he ask? Okay, he asked, yeah, I mean, he said, he, he, I mean, ask and kind of commanded because that's the main mission in this world of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. God wants us to eat. So, so you know, I always like to, to be a bit provocative. You know what you're created for? You're created just to eat. Huh. Now, um, you know, it's pretty cool. We love eating, but um, sometimes we do over it. Uh, and it's not healthy. <laughs> and and you know, in America, right, everybody is working on a diet solution and all that, exercising. It's one of the big, big, big thing of uh, the big worry of, of, of today's world is, you know, eating healthy. Well, it has much more to do with who we are as a human being than what we think, because that's the first thing that God said, go eat. Um, so the first thing that God says, I want you to eat from everything. I want to discover the world. I want to, you to learn what the world is, what I created by, by learning what the world is, you will understand who I am, right? So every fruit, every tree is a knowledge of, 
of who I am. And you have to take it. And like um, a lot of people don't, don't know that, but the way you eat is the way you learn. The way you learn is the way you eat. You know, some people, they, they, they go, they eat like that, 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 that. So they, they learn, they learn, they learn, but at the end, it's too much. They can't they can digest it. So they, 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 you become constipated or whatever, or, or, or the bad unhealthy stuff. You're supposed to eat slowly. You're supposed to chew slowly. You're supposed to enjoy, look at the, the, the beauty of the food that you are eating. That's why you have the whole concept of blessings to, to, to make you eat the right way. My rabbi uh, always says, you know, if you want to go on a diet, do the brachos diet. Because if you eat with brachos the proper way, you never be fat, right? <laughs> uh, you, you eat, I mean, my rabbi's father and grandfather, um, so Rabbi Jacob Weinberg, that's all, Rabbi Ruderman, that's, that's all, they, um, they used to eat very slowly and Birkat, Ama Birkat Amazon used to take 45 minutes for them. <laughs> Right, so you understand, like it, it's 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 a whole avoda, literally avoda, right? Again, connected to the korbanos, to the the work that we had to do in Gan Eden. So it, 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 eating is a type of communication. Is how and and that's how we um, meet people all the time. We spend time with people, speaking and eating, right? Um, but if you want to know what type of person, how a person is in essence with its own soul, it, how he deals with the physical world, just check how he eats. The more a person eats with manners, the more it's a person that is usually, most of the time, refined or has the quality to, uh, to handle the world and to control himself in a, in a holy manner. Um, and by the way, the Ramcha and many others explain if you want to learn to be holy, learn how to eat properly that's eating is the one of the first steps to holiness because eating is how i'm gonna handle this world how i'm gonna um use this world properly um and not being you know not over it and not not being an animal because what makes you different than an animal when we eat if you just go like that like the animal you know without thinking so the moment we pause, the moment we go slower, when I, have, I have a little booklet on eating for, for those who want, I can send it. It's called um, Eating with Holiness, but I, in there I wrote 12 steps to eating. You know, you have 12 steps to, to, uh, for AA meetings, but I have 12 steps to eating because we're all addicted to eating. We know a lot of eating, but can you eat properly? Can you control that eating? So I teach you step by step. And in there, uh, one of the things to do is you, you, you know, like you, you have the, the food and you go slower than you will usually go. Because if you go at the regular speed, there's nothing different between you and the animal. You're doing the animalistic instinct to eat. Nothing wrong with that, but you're on the animal level. The moment you slow down and you're in control of the speed of your eating, already you achieve a level of controlling the physical material and your instinct and you become of, be above the animal. And that's what each bracha is. Each bracha makes you pause before, uh, but we don't necessarily, sometimes we do the bracha even faster than when we eat. <laughs> so the bracha itself has to be done uh, properly also, not too fast. Um, sorry, I, I, I know there's, some, there's a lot of tensions and all that, but it's all connected. So for me, it's hard to disconnect everything. Uh, you know, it's, it's all one. Literally. Okay, so. Uh, Ravi. Yes. Ravi. Uh, regarding the, um, the eating, also, I, I don't remember where I read this, but it's like, um, it says that it's no good to stand up right away when you finish to eat from the table. Uh, what is the mystical message behind this? Okay, yes, yeah, a very good question. I mean, the, the Rambam, you know, in, in Hilchos Deos, which is in his, the Rambam wrote uh, a 14 volume on how to practice the Torah properly. And the whole section of Halakha that the Rambam brings, because the book of Halakha, he has a whole section on how to behave and to properly. Um, and in there is a whole section on eating 
and he and with a lot of details and there is plus very where you saw it he speaks about um that that you should not you know stand up right away after eating you should not go on the walk you should not uh, right away after it, because there's a need for digesting so the main thing has to do with digesting it means that these two things on a more spiritual level you did something holy you did something special so you make the blessing and you uh, in a way appreciate you give kavod you give honor to what you did you know it's like uh, imagine you experience something amazing right so stay with that amazing exper experience just incorporate digest it let it um, you know the, the food is so pleasurable if I eat, give you something that it took me like five hours to prepare, like a French cook, you know, I prepare like in the plate, you have like two, three things, but it's like took so much time preparation and it's done with that special sauce, all that. So if you just eat it like that and then you go on your way, you, it, it's a waste, it's a total waste. God makes everything in a very specific way and with love for us to experience. And we're supposed to, take it and learn to appreciate what it is that we experienced, right? If you don't enjoy, you know, it's like those people after an amazing movie, they stay a few more minutes on the seat, like, wow, you know, that's powerful. You, you, you try to incorporate, to digest the, the, the experience and, and learn from it, right? Like, what did I learn? What did I experience? And feel the love of Hashem feel the beauty, feel the incredible uh, experience of this world. So that's, that, that's one thing. And the other thing is, um, what am I say? Yeah, it has to do with digestion. The same thing that it teaches us about how to use this world and how to learn something. After you learn something, especially if it's something from Torah or something, don't, don't go right away into your you know, secular daily activities. Just try to, wow, reflect, take some notes, digest it, make it part of your life. How can I use it? How can I, how, 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 how did, do I love God more now than before? Because everything is a gift. So yes, so that's, uh, I hope it answers a little bit your question. It was a great question. Um, so, so, Okay, so then, so, so we continue. And Hashem, God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, right? And which is the first thing that God said to Adam. And he continues, but of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat thereof. For on the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. So, so here we have one of the trees one of the knowledge that is detrimental, meaning is like you decide to eat something that is not ripe yet, something that is not fully cooked, right? A knowledge that you're not ready to have. Like uh, my Rebbe explained before um, about Yosef and the brothers, uh, that when the brother Yosef says Ani Yosef, the brothers actually are say on the spiritual level they, they die at that moment. The shock was so intense that they, they passed out. They, they were frozen. They couldn't they couldn't grasp that knowledge. And by the way, that's the same reason why at the end of time it says the Geula, the redemption is going to come step by step. Because if God will reveal Himself completely, it's like you're in the dark and someone puts the light and. You, 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 you're blinded by the light, it's too intense. So there was the knowledge about good and evil, which was too intense for men to deal with it. What's wrong with knowing good and evil? There's nothing wrong with knowing good and evil. The problem is if you experience evil, and we know that about people at a young age, right? If they see something that is, is a trauma, you experience some, something negative or intense, whether it's uh, something sexual or something uh, of the war or something, uh, well, any, any kind of, of traumatic experience, you, you, the, the child, neshama, mind and heart cannot handle it. It's too intense. And because of that, it, it, it creates a glitch in the system 
and it takes takes years to repair. Um, you know, which, which which is kind of what what happened. Uh, um, we see when he dies, when when, when he eats, um, and that's what he says. If you eat from that tree, you you're gonna experience a, a death, a deadly experience, the death of you as you are. There's gonna be a trauma, and 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 the the whole world really now we are in the we're doing therapy. Our world now. Since the, the, the scene of Adam Rishon is in therapy, we're trying to deal with the trauma that we experience with the tree of knowledge and good and evil at the beginning. Again, we have to understand that God, Adam was not someone, you know, uh, well, we're not there yet, but, but he, he was not someone like childish, who, you know, we didn't know what he, 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 he was very smart, he was smarter than all of us. He understood the God like no one else, and he could see from one end of the world to the other. So he understood they were that. Okay, but um, well, well, when we come to the to to the scene, we'll we'll go more into it. Um, but let's understand good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil say that he was in the center of the garden with the tree of life, like we saw before. And therefore they're inter interlinked, meaning having a knowledge too early when you're not prepared for it, 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 it damages the, the life, the healthy life that you have. But they say it was one tree, one tree with two branches or two tree in one, whatever it is. Again, uh, those were not speaking about physical trees. Those were spherot, those were like spiritual experiences um, that we represent as trees and fruits um, and that, that we could partake, that we could learn and connect to and use as tools to connect to God. But, so that one was uh, a, a tree that was too intense for us to use already then. So um, Hashem, God said, it is not, okay, so that's, that's a, Right after he speaks about us, uh, he speaks about what we're here to do, to eat and to work and to, to guard the garden and to eat, right? Obviously, part of the work is to eat. Um, that's how you, you, you work it and you guard it, right? So the work is you eat from all the trees and to guard it is don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we have, that's why it's right next to you. And right after that, right after that, God said, it's not good for that man be alone. Meaning, what it means not good for man to be alone? If it was not good for man to be alone, then don't make him alone, right? So God is just making a statement. He's, he's making a statement. He's saying that the purpose for, for, for man to be successful and to do his work in the Gan Eden, he needs um, to have someone else, another being. Because the good comes, and the good comes only with someone else. Now, he says, therefore, I will make him a helper corresponding to him. Now, why do he need to make a helper corresponding to him? Like, again, if God really wanted to not make him alone, and he knew it was not good for men to be alone, then you don't have to go through that whole thing. Just make, make a man already with someone else. So our rabbis hints of a, to us to something very deep here. In the Midrash and uh, the Kabbalistic writings, he says that really Adam was not alone. Man was not alone. How do I know? Because there was God. <laughs> it's you and God, you're not alone, right? So, um, so technically, we were supposed to, what well, we just described before, to have a relationship with God. Why do you put people in the world in your garden if it's not good for men to be on? Because it was us and God in the garden. So what happened? 
what when what's the definition of good what's the definition of good you know what the only good is david amelar says the only good is hashem right and and end of Ela hashem something like that there's nothing good but hashem so therefore it's not good to be meant to be alone you want the good not be alone it's you become one with hashem he said that adam Arishon was searching for a spouse he asked where is my spouse? God, Adam wanted to um, find a spouse, which means, right, that he didn't recognize that Hashem is here with him, or at least he didn't understand the relationship he was supposed to have with Hashem. And here I want to read a Rashi uh, on it's not good for men to be alone to understand what I'm saying. That is, I know I'm not inventing things. Why it's not good for men to be alone? Rashi says Shelo yamru shteresuyot hen that men that Adam or men people should not say there are two powers, two um, yeah two powers in control. Hakadosh Baruch Hu Yachid Ba'elionim this God one in heaven ve'en lozuk and he doesn't have a, he doesn't need a mate. And this man is one on earth. The Enlozug, and he doesn't need a mate, doesn't have a mate. So therefore, God said, I gotta make him um, a partner because he's gonna think God is in heaven, man is on earth. And so God controls heaven and I control earth, but God does, does his business and I do my business, so to speak. So, which is not the purpose of the world. The purpose is to unite heaven and earth and to unite mankind and God. So let, let, let's see, we understand better as we continue. It says, um, now he said, the first thing he said, I will make him a helper corresponding to him. So it has to be some, uh, a helper like, that, that looks like him. And interestingly, you know, this come right after what they say, don't eat from the tree of knowledge. Obviously this helper was supposed to help him not eat from the tree of knowledge, so to speak. Now it continues. Now Hashem God had formed out of the ground every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he will call each one. And whatever the man called each living creature, that remained its name. Right? So, first of all, it's very strange. Okay, we were, what are you talking now about animals and naming the animals? I thought you wanted to create a helper corresponding to him, right? Very strange. Um, and the man assigned names. Again, man could see, like I said before, he was very spiritual. He could see every animal and find its name and understand its um, its essence and understand what it is. So he he was naming everything. He was giving the true essence name of uh, of of what that animal represents. We know in Hebrew everything means something. So. Uh, and men assigned the, assigned the name to all the cattle and to the birds of the sky and to every beast of the fields. But as of man, he did not, not find a helper corresponding to him. So I don't understand you, man, right? So man was looking for wife. And that's why the Midrash, I believe it's the Midrash, it says, uh, where, where is my wife? Where is my helper corresponding to me? Um, so God said, Okay, let's find what looks like you, what's similar to you. So he put, he brought him all the creatures in front of him and say, maybe this one. No, that's an Arya. This, uh, this is a male lion, female lion. Oh, no, this uh, is a fish, a male fish, female fish. Everything was male, female. And it goes in pairs. So obviously he saw that there was nothing that looked like him. But my understanding is that Hashem was trying to push him to understand, to look deeper into creation, to find out what looked the most like him. What looked the most like him? Hashem. How is God made? 
uh, how is man made? Betzelem Elohim. We're made in the image of Hashem, on the image of Elohim, of the, 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 the powers of God. So technically, we sh men should have recognized that he, his soulmate is God. And that's why you have an entire, you know, well, we have an entire book of Tanakh, Shira Shirim, which is dedicated to that Hashem and the Jewish people representing men and women and, uh, and Hashem marrying, at, marrying us at Mount Sinai and, and so many, many uh, like examples of God and us being like a Chatan and a Kala, a husband and wife. Uh, that's where it comes from. But somehow men didn't realize that. There was a, 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 a men didn't see himself. So God is in heaven and I'm on earth. And therefore, we, we, we can't combine. God is too high. I'm too low. And, um, and, 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 and therefore, on some level, he didn't feel adequate or he, didn't, he felt like, you know, how can I be one with God? Um, and I believe it connects to the famous story of the Midrash that it says there were the sun and the moon, right? And the sun and the moon had the same size. Um, and, 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 there, and there was one crown and the moon complained to the sun, how, and by the way, that was the first machloket in, in, in the world. <laughs> um, so we know it's all start there, that machloket. And the, so this, the moon said, how can we have one crown for two people? You know what? And God said, you know what? You're right. Um, since you, you, your understanding is you can have one crown for two people, you're going to be reduced, you're going to be smaller, and then um, I'm going to have the crown. And then later on, when you're able to gain more perspective, so to speak, or understand how things can work with me, then you're going to go back to the size, says when Moshe comes, the size of the, the light of the moon is going to be as bright as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun is going to be even greater. But the idea is that God said, I want you to be my partner. I want you to be, you know, king and queen. And, and I said, no, I'm going to be queen. You know, you, or, you, or you're the king or I'm, or I'm the king. <laughs> uh, he, God saw, uh, Adam saw, so to speak, only his male side. That's very important because everything in the Torah is about male, female. Everything in the world is about the challenge between male and female. Adam didn't see in himself his female side. He saw himself only as male. And that's why he didn't understand how he can be one with God. God, he saw God as male, ruler, the giver, right? In heaven, the spiritual, he, he's man, he controls, he's, he's the king. And, um, and he doesn't need a queen. And I'm also, I'm like God. I'm a king on earth. I don't need a queen. Uh, you, you know, I, want, I don't need anything else. Um, I can, I can be a king over the earth and solo. I can play it solo. And God is saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, you misunderstand. You are not God, <laughs> right? This is the man's ego. I want to be like God. I want to have the power, right? This is the whole ego of men in this world. I think they're gods. Um, so the woman, as Rashi said, the woman comes and says, hey, dude, you're not God, okay? <laughs> because without me, you know, you, you can have love. Without me, you can have children. Without me, you have nothing. So that's what God kind of is saying. So there was a lot for man to recognize his female part, understand that God was supposed to be the male and we were supposed to be the female. And that's the Ezer Kenegdo, that we were supposed to be God's Ezer Kenegdo, so to speak, to make God greater. Um, so, but as for men, he did not find a helper corresponding to him. So men didn't recognize that really he was supposed to be one with God and that he was supposed to be God's female. He didn't want to be female. And so Hashem, so what did Hashem do? He got, Hashem God cast a deep sleep upon the man and he slept. 
so God, again, the deep sleep here, we understand uh, these different ways. Okay, it's the first surgery of the world, but we speak on the spiritual level. Um, and why do you have to cast a deep sleep? And then he slept, right? Okay, there's a lot of questions. We're not answering all the questions because, because beyond the scope, we're trying to be global already to focus on the most important part. Um, but it, it, the, the, the Tardema that it speaks about, it speaks of the same thing about Avram, which is a type of prophecy, type of sleep of prophecy. Um, so God was doing some kind of spiritual surgery with men and he slept and then he took one of his sides and he filled in flesh in its place. So again, people translate very often as a, um, a bone, as, as, as the, 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 I would say, I forgot, the tzela, the, the rib, one rib, uh, but really it was not a rib. It was, it was uh, because it was not physical at the time yet, but it was a side of him. Uh, there's a reason why we can be translated as rib, obviously, because the, 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 the woman represents something um, more, um, more stronger on a physical level. She has a strength in the physical that the man doesn't have, um, inner strength. So we'll, we'll speak about it perhaps later. But what's happening is that he took one of his sides and he filled in, uh, in flesh in its place. Then Hashem, God fashioned the side that he had taken from the man into a woman. Which is actually interesting. He fashioned the thing that he put, took from man. It doesn't, it, it doesn't say what it was. It was like it was neutral. And then he made that into a woman. <laughs> So, so, and he brought her to the man. So what's going on? We see that the first struggle of man is to recognize his female side. Adam had to understand these two parts of myself. I'm, um, I have a male and female power. Or we know on, in, uh, on a physical level, we have male and female hormones. Everybody is male and female. You know, the baby at the beginning has the, the chromosomes, right? It's, uh, forgot what it is, X, X. Uh, it's only at, after a, a, a little, a few weeks that it's changed to X, Y and uh, determined whether it's male or female. But originally we were supposed to be God's wife um, and God's woman, so to speak, and, and, and work on our relationship with him. But... Adam's ego, so to speak, Adam's uh, self, he, was, he saw himself only as male. And now we can understand why for the past 5,000 years in history, the women have been always looked down upon because of the men. The men feel the, the, the ego and the power were strong and therefore it's the male that, is, that, that came first, so to speak. Because when you speak about Adam, he was not more male than female. Adam, when he was created, was completely 50-50, male-female. But he didn't let himself accept that female part of him. Because somehow he looked at it, just like the moon, as something uh, weaker, or something of second class, or something uh, not as great as the male. And, 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 and so God was teaching him something incredible. He said, no, 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 you, you got it completely wrong. Everything I create is female. God, he says, I am male, so to speak. Well, God was not male, female, but male in the sense the male power, which is the energy to give. The female power is energy to receive and build from what was given. So God was saying, I create the world. The world is my female, everything I create. I am the male and the world is female. And the goal is to be one, get back together. I distance myself from the world so that the world can come back with me. So God had to show Adam from within himself, within his psyche, within his neshama, within his body, that what it is that God is, so to speak, to understand God and his relation with him. So God said, just like I took from myself, I took a side of me. God said, I took a side of me and I brought it out. <sighs> what well, God blew into Adam's nostrils. He took from inside himself, 
So he brought from his essence and making it outside. So too, for you to experience that you were my wife, that you are gonna experience the same thing that I did. Now comes out of you, not out of blowing, but because you know it, 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 he, it was a surgery that God had to do. He, he took from inside Adam and took the female power outside of him. And now he will be faced with his female power, with the beauty of, of, of what a woman is. And, and that's why the men and women have to look different because it's, it's the part of him that he didn't connect to. A man has to look at the woman, understand this is what I, I denied of myself in order to have a true relationship with God. So we have to embrace and look at those female qualities. For example, you know, all the guys complain, my wife is so emotional, my wife is so sensitive, my wife is so this and that. Those are all qualities that you don't like because a man is a man, a man doesn't cry, a man da da da. That's completely wrong. It's the misunderstanding because men, a real man, is that balance between men and female. So men was given the ability to face the female power. He was given the, 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 the gift of seeing what was in him that he denied so that then he learned to become one with that female power, with that female hood, with that female energy, and then be able to use that to be one with God, to be balanced and to use sometimes his male power and sometimes his female power with God and with the world. So uh, um, this is so important because we have to understand that when someone marries someone else, He's not marrying someone else. He's marrying himself. When I marry someone, I marry my other opposite energy. And by the way, sometimes the man is more female and sometimes the woman is more male. We, it's the story of all the male-female power that exists in history. The confusion, and by the way, that whole male-female thing is the whole problem that people have today. I identify as a man, I identify as a woman. Why there's so much confusion? It's because we are pushed to understand what female and male power is and not because it's not because you have a female power or female energy or a male or female uh, a male or uh, energy or power that you have to change body we all are male and female you but you have to learn to accept and create balance with with the two so when we marry our spouse we marry ourselves, the part of ourselves that was taken out of us. And we learn to be one with that female power, energy of, of ourselves. And therefore, obviously, it's completely different. It's, it's, it's so different than us because it's everything that you're not as a man or everything that you're not as a female. So that, that's, that the, the, that's the, whole, the whole challenge. Um, Okay, we're almost up to the time, so let's try to conclude. Um, so then Hashem God uh, fashioned the side that he had taken from the man into a woman, and he brought her to the man, right? It's not the opposite. You could say God would have taken the man out of the woman, right? The man out of Adam, but no, he took the woman out of Adam, not the man. He could have fashioned... And then, right, because we automatically identify Adam as male because we have been so brainwashed with, with that, that male energy that's trying to take over. So it could have been the man created out of the woman, but no, because it's the woman part that you need to face that you, don't, you didn't relate to. And, 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 then, and then the man said, this time it is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Uh, so we see that now he started realizing, oh, this is who I am. This is, this is part of me. But in, the, in, in a sense, he misread, meaning God, right? Because obviously he is saying, oh, you, you're exactly like me. Instead of understanding that you were made in the image of God and you're supposed to be one with God. Now he has something more tangible to relate. 
he has to learn to be one with himself, with my, my, the same essence of me. When he understands to be one with himself, male, female, he'll be able to then use that between him and God, male, female, me and God. Yes, you can give to God, you can be male to God, that's when you give to God, but you can be female from, to, to God, you can receive. So again, we have those, that, that, that energy relationship. Um, and, and then he concludes, this shall be called woman, for from man was she taken. Um, so he called her woman because taken from man. So some say it's, it was a nice way to put it. I, I follow the commentaries that say that it was not a positive say, uh, way to, to, to say that. Oh, right, that he says in Hebrew, um, uh, lezot, for this, ikare isha ki me ish lukacha zos, right? I'm going to call her Isha because she comes from Ish. So she saw, he saw her as an extension. Oh, you know, you're, you're, you're junior, an extension of me. Okay, it doesn't have to be necessarily negative, but the way I understand, because he was struggling with that female entity, he, he looked at her and he said, oh, so you're an extension of me. So I can relate to you. You come from me. But that's like, it, it, he, he didn't give its own value, its own valor, its own beauty. Yeah, you come from me. I'm alpha, you're beta, right? And here comes the whole struggle of women, of the female, you know, uh, uh, disrespect in the world since the beginning of creation. Um, okay, I think it's, we're gonna, it's a good place to, st to stop. Uh, because this is always much more. But the idea is, right, to understand that we, we were supposed to, we're supposed to be married with Hashem. And because of that, because we misunderstood what male-female relationship is with Hashem, because of the ego, because of um, the, the, because of the feeling of, of inadequacy than men, if men had felt he was deserving to be almost equal to God, right? God is saying, God was saying something incredible. I want you to be my equal. Now, of course, we are not God. Of course, we cannot be like God. God is beyond everything. But God said, I want you to relate to me like a man and a woman. There's not boss, bo boss in the family. There's no boss man, boss man or best woman. Nobody's a boss in the home. We are one crown and we can live together on the same level and treat each other as with honor doesn't have to be always one higher than the other and that's what god was saying and man and has been the problem of man since the beginning of creation that that that, that man feels he's so small how, how how can i even talk to god how can i even ask something from god is god even interesting in me i'm i'm second class citizen i'm the woman god is not gonna care about me why would god care about me i'm nothing and that's the whole mistake. That's when we started doing Abu Dazara. That's because we didn't think that God would even be interested in us. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. God loves you. God created you. God took him, took you out of himself, just like you saw the woman going out of you. So that's, that's part of what we have to rectify today in our life today. That's why we have so many problems, why did all relationships are broken and people are divorced and this cheating and this people are so confused with the male female thing and 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 it has been harder than ever to work on marriage and and uh, and it requires real effort it requires discovering an entire part of ourselves that is opposite it, it, it requires us to look at our spouse not as a stranger that we choose to marry but as ourselves literally when you give something to your spouse you give something to yourself when you when 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 you love the other, you love yourself. And, and because we don't look at the other like ourselves, we don't treat the other one like ourselves, right? Don't do to the other what you don't want to be done to you. Then we're not able to create that male, female, equal energy, that balance and that respect and that love. So that, that's the, 
the big challenge that we are faced today and we're at the end of time and we have to fix that last piece and learn to, to do the same with Hashem. Um, any questions? Or it was crystal clear? <laughs> it was understanding. Okay, Bao Hashem. Good. Thank you. No, oh, my pleasure. Thank you for joining and changing the world with us. This uh, learning should be uh, a, a zuchut, a, a merit for for the Klal Israel to be protected from all the bombs, all the rockets, all the terrorism, um, and uh, in Israel and all over the world. And uh, may our learning bring you know, the redemption faster. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you all next week in Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen. It's Thank possible. You. Ashen can do anything. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Good job. Bye. Good job.